happened. It's the something that everything happens. Da -da 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 -da. Let's make. Hello and welcome to the stream. That was some powder there today was the children's show song 321 Contact from way back in the beginning of time. Okay, so uh, today we're just going to, this session, we're just going to continue with what we were doing before, but we're also going to go ahead and break some stuff. Uh, and I'm not sure whether we want to break stuff first or we're going to test to see that stuff is working, uh, and then after we've confirmed it's working, break it. I think it'll be more fun to test stuff, confirm that it's actually working, and then break it. So let's go ahead and try that. And what we're going to try here is um, um, we are going to, well, I guess we need to actually finish up these, uh, these functions here. All right, so this function here is supposed to return given, um, right, right, this function here just converts from J2000 to B1875. Uh, we'll leave that function as it is. Constellation number. Now, there's probably no point in returning a number here. We actually want to return a string that tells you what constellation you're in. Uh, now that we've gotten it all fixed up, we should, so this should actually be char star constellation number double RA double um, double declination. Um, so the, okay, and I'm trying to be better about um, commenting to the point I actually have a uh, note that one of the things we need to do in our stream here is to commentify my, not commentify, commentify my code. Um, and we will do that at some point, but I'm going to try to do it more as we go along. Okay, so given the J2000 RA and DEC, um, return the consta, return the IAU constellation. Constellation, uh, const, constellation. All right. So the first thing we have to do, of course, is, um, aside from making sure these things are indented correctly, is to call the function that will convert J2000 to uh, B, let's see, so, um, uh, we will need, we'll need to convert these to uh, B1875, um, and maybe we're going to be clever and say RA1875 and DEC1875. Those, those are perfectly good variable names. So then we're going to say J2000 to B1875, RA DEC, and put it into RA1875, DEC1875. Okay. Um, then we have these, I guess I can leave them the way they are. I mean, I guess technically this should occur, oh, so hang on. I guess we should define the static arrays first and then, um, then make our computations. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. And, oh, there's another one. I've got four arrays here, I didn't realize that. Um, okay. Um, now, there's another couple things we need to do here. First of all, we're going to, um, and let's go ahead and be very clear here. Uh, let's see. Um, so, we need to actually document this a little bit better. Um, I think that's correct. Given the RA and DEC in radians, in J2000 radians, return the RA and DEC in J18 B1875 radians. Um, and then to do is we do want to improve this so it works for any date, but right now we don't care. So this is doing this, and I'm pretty sure the way I have this written, it is currently using radians. Uh, we do not need this matrix. So this is just convert. And here's where we could actually use the, uh, you know, use some comments. Um, convert from J2000 to equator of date where is B1875. To do, confirm uh, is B1875 um, maybe off by by some seconds. That's because of leap seconds, leap seconds, and because of, uh, I don't remember if the uh, the epoch starts at noon on January 1st or 
midnight of January 1st. Um, so we will make that note. It's not going to be a huge deal because the, the amount of time we're going to be off by is very, very small. Um, okay, we're okay. Um, matrix to convert. Convert input RA deck to XYZ. Multiply converted input by matrix. Convert output XYZ to RA deck. Okay. Um, half pi. Uh, because function wants co-latitude, not latitude. Okay? So I think, I mean, we should say declination, but I, mean, I think that's good enough. Convert x, um, okay? Um, ah, yes. Fix deck out to be declination, not co-declination. I'm not sure is a word, but I can put it in quotes so I can use it. All right, we do not need to print the matrix anymore. And we don't actually need to return anything because this function doesn't return anything. It just assigns values to the uh, input per variables you gave it. Awesome. Okay. So now given the J2000RAN date in radians, return... the three-digit, three-letter IAU constellation abbreviation. So we're going to be a little bit more specific here. And I'm pretty sure we did cut this down to three. We did. Good. Um, in radians. Okay, so now um, we can jump down to the part of the uh, program where we actually do something. Okay. Convert J2000 RA deck to B1875 RA deck. Okay. Um, radians. Okay. Now here's where it gets ugly. Convert RA in radians to RA in hours times 3600, uh, which is kind of how we're doing things. So that's a little bit uh, weird. Excuse me. Just eating some, drinking something and eating the ice. Very good. Um, so if it's in radians, we need to divide by pi c, multiply by 180, and that brings us to degrees. Um, from to get from degrees to hours, I think we need to divide by 15, and then to get to that uh, 3600. Now, we could probably combine this, and I'm certainly hoping that uh, the C compiler is smart enough to, um, to combine these functions, and basically, although honestly, pi, of pi c is a, is a function call, it really shouldn't be. Um, but I, I'm not really concerned about... Um, I'm not really concerned about efficiency at this point. Um, although at some point I would like to make the, the uh, search a binary search, but let's just see how this goes. Radians to deck in degrees times 3600. So 180 over pi c, is that converts it to degrees, times 3600 converts it to seconds, which just happens to be what it is. Okay, then we um, um, that's just a declaration. Find position of coordinate in RA and dex array z, and then did I? Yeah, and I think I definitely want this to do is still in there. Right now we just go loop through the array, which is terrible. Um, Position in consts containing 
constellation number. Okay, we're getting there. Um, return the constellation name from names array. It's going to be return names of constval. If I did this correctly, I will be very surprised. Okay. Order is in, okay, to do radian special case for, uh, yeah, we won't worry about that for right now, but it is, it is an important special case. Um, so now, I don't actually remember what the answers are supposed to be, but that's okay, because we're going to do something to test it more deeply in just a second, but for right now, I would like to rerun this test really quickly. Um, um, So it's the right ascension, the declination, and the, um, I think it's, we called it the constellation name, right? No, char star, ooh, no, no, it's got to be constellation name by now. In fact, we'll just say constellation, because that seems like it's close enough. Okay, all the wonderful magic should happen, and we should now be getting, um, I think I'll leave this testing code in here, but I, I think I think we won't need it anymore. So this is the preliminary test that we that we didn't break anything just in this uh, transformation. Um, so let's see, unused variable. Ooh, 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 ooh. Constellation percent. Um, are R index actually their integers here? Let's see. I guess the way I've got them set up, they are integers. Um, I'm tempted to put a dot in front of them so they become floating points, but uh, I think we can live without that. Uh, unused variable deck out. Okay, yeah, good. We'll get rid of those. We don't need them anymore. We have functions to do all our work for us. Okay. So now the only error here should be uh oh actually I think I think we we're fine. So now BC constell less Okay, didn't work at all. Um Um Okay, very nice. No printing at all. Let me do this one real quick to make sure that the make didn't bomb out on us. Okay, so it did work. Segmentation fault. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, so obviously the question here is, did we fix the RA and the declination to be correct? And... And I, e I admit we easily could have messed this up because we're doing a bunch of conversions here. So let's make sure the... Um, uh, And we want to make sure, okay, so RA times 3600 is percent F, deck times 3600 is percent F, and then RA and deck, make sure we got those right. Um, yeah, we, we, we kind of, um, oh, ooh, ooh, hang on, I know what's wrong. Um, Constval tells you the position in consts that the number is, so we actually want consts of const val. So, one more time. Um, yeah, that didn't go well. Okay. Const, const val. So here we do have 0 minus 60, which is not what we expected. Unless I'm doing a double multiply by 3600 sometime, somewhere. I don't think I am. Alright, we're going to skip the first Pomodoro, but we will go from here on. I will take two minute breaks every 20 minutes. Uh, so RA and deck. Oh wait, this printout actually occurs... Yeah, 
Yeah, maybe printf is what I meant to say here. Alrighty. Um, clearly, hmm, well, let's see what this number is times, um, divided by 3600, that's the test, and also I'm going to fix the frickin' calc function one day. Okay, so clearly that's wrong. We, we, we're not supposed to be converting. Um, oh, wait, are we supposed to feed this thing the declination? Yep, we're supposed to feed it in radians, and I'm feeding it in degrees, which is wrong. Um, so, it's going to be RA. This is in hours. To get hours to degrees, we multiply by 15, and then to get that, 180 times pi this seems a little bit redundant to do all this uh, undo and un redo, but this is... Oh man, now I'm tempted to make the original thing just say for degrees, but I think I'm trying to be better about using radians, so... So my, um, my gut says go ahead and use radians here. And the other functions will at one point... We'll, at some point we need to normalize, standardize whether we use radians or degrees. And I think radians is going to be the correct way to do it. Uh, obviously, we will often want to convert from radians to degrees. And I just realized there's a function that does that, but it wouldn't work for RA anyway, so it doesn't matter. All right, one more time. Uh, okay, here we go. Pisces, Pisces, Pisces. Virgo, 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 Pisces. Um, that's not looking good. I'm pretty sure that's not what we had before. And it's also not correct, which is sort of another... Let's go ahead and pin this. This is important enough to pin. So we were supposed to be getting like Tucana, Pavo, all this crap. Alright, so let's see what's going on here. Um, yeah, that's certainly not the declination times 3600. Unless I'm doing something weird here. Um... So the declination over 180 times pi c should be the declination in radians. Okay. And then... Um, we multiply it by 180 over pi over c, so okay. All right, let's make sure... I think we might have screwed it up somewhere in this process, so we'll just print before and after. Um, and also, I just realized we're doing what, what we're doing is pointless because we actually want the RA 1875 and the declination of 1875, not the current declination. And then we need to change RA 1875 and declaration declination 1875 to this. And then over here, we need... 1875 as well. And I think that is, that is it. All right. Lots of things broken there. Okay. So pre, dex is minus 0.01, and post, dex from minus 60 is, um, Minus two five, so that's not correct, obviously. Alrighty, I think this is a very simple error we can fix fairly easily. Okay, so if deck is in degrees, this should convert it into um, into radians and minus sixty degrees is about minus one radians, because I know 57 degrees is a radian, roughly. Okay, so over here we have um, the converted declination, and this, this is actually not time, this is before we do anything with it, 
Um, the converted declination is, and that does not seem correct. It seems like that should be minus one point something. Uh, so we have an issue right up at the top here. Okay. We're not multiplying anything by, we're, d you know, we're subtracting by half pi and stuff. Okay, so... Okay. Okay. Let's see if we're even making it this far. Um, I think this is what we were printing out earlier and we don't really... Not, excuse me. It's not what we really need. Um, but this will make sure our, our variables are being passed correctly. Okay. Original is zero, zero. That's not... Yeah, that's not correct for zero and minus 60. The only thing I'm thinking is I've got integer multiplication going on, which is why I really, as I thought I should have done, um, oh, yeah, and also deck needs to be a double. And actually, I don't think that I need these dots. It's, it's just because it's a double, it'll automatically, it'll act like a double when I multiply it by stuff. I think that's the problem. We're doing integer multiplication instead of, oh. Now, of course, we have to also change these two doubles or floats. All right, now let's see what's going on. That's a segmentation fault, and that's not good. Okay. Constellation of this, declination of this. Um, I realize I'm not supposed to compare t floats here. So this dies almost immediately. Um, presumably, it, it doesn't get to printing this out because it never gets around to printing out the constellation. Okay. Not Ruby. So what we might be able to do here, um, because I want to see if we can get some print out of this damn thing. Okay, let's do that. I'm gonna get rid of const size. It's really starting to bug me. I know I got rid of it before and said I wanted it again, and I probably should have commented it out instead of getting rid of it entirely, but whatevs. Okay, why did that suddenly not... Um, segmentation fault? That's kind of magical. Okay, pick, car... Cr I think we went through this list before, and this is actually pretty accurate. Now let me try this. Combine these two. Um, printf statements, um, which clearly are being stupid. So now we'll just try doing this. Unless I missed something on the, um, I might have missed a parameter or something and it didn't quite catch it. All right. Beautiful, no errors, yay. Okay, here we go. Okay, I think this is... We need to get a pre and post now, or I'm just going to comment them out, because I'm not stupid. Well, I am stupid, but I'm going to comment them out anyway. And now we should get a very nice... I'm going to just check a few of them, but we should get a very nice uh, the results we got before. So, took me... Took whore pick car... Took or pick car and crux. Yeah, we're, we're good. Okay. 
So now I'm kind of tempted. Um, I'm tempted to write a binary search for the RA and declination arrays so we don't have to go through all of them. Um, and they're pretty well, I mean, they're 200. They're not that big. Um, but I and will do that after we break stuff. So how do we... Wait a minute. Uh, no. 90 degrees is not Andromeda. Not cool. So hang on here. And 60 degrees is not Ursa... Well, it could be Ursa Major. Uh, but we expect to see Ursa Minor here. So some other issue has occurred. God damn it. Um, yeah, B1875 is not enough precession to get us from, uh, to get us from Ursa Minor to Ursa Major, uh, from Ursa Minor to, to Andromeda. Cassopia 1560, let's see if that's at least a little bit correct. Um, okay, that's correct, actually. Well, let's see. Cassopia, Cassopia, Cameldorpus. Uh, or some major, and then multiple Cassopias. Is that correct? So at 12, we should still have some major, and then for um, no, we should have Draco, Draco, Cephas. Okay, not cool. But it does seem to be kind of breaking after like uh, 12, 15, 18. It's like these four ones here tend to be the same as though something's gone wrong. So once we get past 15 hours, we're having an issue. So let's see what, how, what, what that is all about. Um, I'm wondering if that's because the precession value is now... Um, we need to mod it by something. Okay. So let's see what that is. That would be very interesting if it turns out that we're just getting enough precession at that very high um, uh, declination that it is actually moving the hours to the wrong place. And we're getting hours beyond 24. I don't think that's the problem though, but it's the only hope I got, man. Okay. So RA times 3600 is this. Declination is this. And this is after procession. And wow. Is this actually correct? Do we actually... Do we actually, are these actually our negative numbers? Uh-uh. Yeah, it looks like we've hit negative numbers here. These numbers should be, um, after precession, these numbers should be uh, positive. Because, so what's happened here is we've had this precessed to like negative 10 hours. Or minus nine hours. Um, that's a lot of procession for just 100 years or so. Um, but okay. I, I'm willing to believe it. Now, the one way to check this is... Um, um, we could change these to RA and DEC. And then we should get the correct answers. But I think we can fix this. Um, so the precessed... Um, okay, this is actually fairly simple. If precessed right ascension is negative, add 24 hours. 
uh, less than zero, RA 1875 plus equals 24 times 3600. We could use things like F mod and stuff, but I don't. Okay. Um, I mean, in theory, we have to deal with the same case if RA 1875 is bigger than, and actually, we probably have to deal with that too, don't we? Um, I don't think that condition will ever occur, though. Ascension. Um, that's probably a simpler way to say that. Okay. It's less than zero if it's greater than 24 times 3600, because we are multiplying by 3600. RA75 minus equals that, so it's uh, that should be more than enough to fix it. I don't think we'll ever be far out that, you know, so far out that it's going to be a mul- oh, I need to do a make. Okay. Cassiopeia, Cassiopeia. No, not working. Hmm. <laughs> I'm also finding it a little bit difficult to believe that 18 hours has precessed to negative... No, I'm not actually having trouble believing that. Although this is kind of ridiculous up here. Three hours is... I can hang on. This might be... Yeah, we might be having some issues here. Um, is it possible that the precession can yield negative... Mmm... Okay. Yeah, I think I see what the problem is. And we still probably need to... Well, let's get rid of that for right now. Okay. Um... So what I want to know is when we come out of here, are these precess numbers for right ascension, can they be negative? They can, we need to fix that. Because we are assuming, um, for our purposes, our, our, our right ascension will always be between uh, 0 and 24 hours. So if this is actually happening, we need to fix it. And it is indeed happening. Oh yeah, it's happening quite a bit. So, okay, here we go. Um, um, correct RA 1875 to lie between 0 and 2 pi, then we don't definitely don't need the other thing. So here we go, if RA 1875 is less than 0, RA 1875 plus equals 2 times pi. It's all radian stuff. I think we could do this with something called F mod as well, floating point mod. Um, but I don't care. And there's actually, hang on, there's actually a constant called 2 pi c, and if they're going to go ahead and give us that, we might as well use it. Um, and now, let's see if that helps. Probably break everything now. Alrighty. Alright, okay, good. So that's almost... Okay, good. We're now on the right side of... We're now getting stuff between 0 and 2 pi. Awesome. And then I think we can get rid of any other printfs we have that are still active. Okay, good. We should just now get the information we want. Or everything will break. One or the other. I probably don't need the post being printed. Um, because we are now making sure that the result is between 0 and 2 pi early on enough that we won't, we'll never have that issue. Okay! Ooh, nice. Hey, 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 There it is! Ursa Minor all the way, because it hasn't moved out of Ursa Minor. It's not quite that, uh, quite that far out. Okay, so I think we fixed this, and Pomodoro time back in 2 and 2.
Okay, and I'm back. Did you miss me? <laughs> um, okay. So now that we've got this sort of minor test working, um, let's go ahead and go back to the test we wanted to run with all of the stars that are, um, that are, uh, in this lovely thing here. And, nope. Oh, that, that is correct. Okay. So, um, what we want from this list is, so we have the uh, star name, which the last three letters are the constellation name, except maybe for serpents. I want to make sure. Hang on. Um, is it Sir? Okay, so even with serpents, they're only using, um, they're only using three letters. Then the right ascension and in hours, and then the declination in degrees, then the magnitude, which we don't care about. So, let's go ahead and do this. We'll use the comma as our separator character. Um, let's make sure this works. And let's go and pipe this to less. Okay, good stuff. We probably need to get rid of the, um, we need to get rid of the left hand brace, of course. But I think we can handle that. Okay, so that's the star name. Oh, I guess we don't even care about that. We just need the um, last three digits. So dollar fine um, equals, so we have any, any number of characters, three more characters, and the quotation mark. Uh, and then the end of the, um, the end of the line, and we replace that with just that. Yep. Okay, fantastic. We actually probably want to leave the quotes there. Um, like that. Um, oh, actually, maybe we don't. Okay. Now this is going to become an ugly enough, um, an ugly enough pearl. It's going to be a one liner, but it's going to be ugly enough that we don't want to necessarily keep tweaking it on the command line. Um, so we do have something called a run me, which I don't know if I have here. I do not. Sorry, one liners. And these are all one liners that we've written to do. I've written to do various things. Excuse me. Uh, various things. And now we're going to go ahead and use it to do, do what we need here. Uh, and then we'll keep tweaking it, and then we just have to say sh one-liners dot sh, or to sh one-liners dot, well, this is a shell script, so it is going to be, all right, so, um, first of all, let's make sure we're getting everything we want. We don't need the magnitude, so we don't care about that. And we this way we also don't have to remember the uh, name of the file, which not that hard to remember, but you know. Alrighty, so now we'll just test to make sure this is working, and then if it is, we'll start tweaking it. Okay, so right now this is good. Um, then what we want to extract, so the second two things are fine, and instead of we could have um, the C program read through this file one letter at a time. Uh, you know, and do all the magic there, but we're going to cheat a little bit and just to print F statements. Um, so the first thing we want to do is for the, the the field that has the constellation name in it, we want to get um, quotation. Actually, it doesn't matter. It's dot star three quotation end dollar sign one this. And now we should just get the constellation as the first thing. Awesome. And for the last two, we do have to call the constel, uh, constellation function. But we actually need to do a little bit more with that. We also need to say, because um, this is in hours, and we need it to be uh, in radians. Uh, but that's not hard, because we're doing that over here already uh, somewhere. And so that's just going to be dollar sign F1 t 
times 50. Now, no, we're not actually doing the actual multiplication here. This is literally, we're printing out characters so that when we put this into uh, the C program, it'll look like, literally look like some number times this, assuming I've done this correctly. Um, yep. And then declination, which we need to do pretty much the same thing, except, of course, it's going to be over 180 times pi c. Okay. So now we have this, this, this. So now... So we're going to be doing... So the, the big part of what we're going to be doing is we're going to be sending this to um, constellation of this and we're going to have a printf. Yes, we're actually writing of C lines in Perl one-liners. That is absolutely correct. And then we're going to say um, so the, the one it's supposed to be is um, dollar sign f0 and then the one it's going to be is this, 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 and if this works, I'll be very surprised if this yields code. Uh-huh. Partly because um, printf quotation, quotation, constellation, quotation, okay. Can't find string terminator, quotation mark. Okay, printf This should be... Oh no, this has to be, this is, this is also a hard quote. Okay. So... That's actually pretty close to what we want, except of course we want it to be printed as a new line. And the first line's probably not relevant, we need to get rid of it, but that's, that's okay. Um, so this is print Pisces, the constellation we expect, followed by the constellation of this thing, which we hope is Pisces. And we probably need a semicolon at the end of all that. Um, okay. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and tweak add me see so in case it has any ugly characters in it. We know the first line is bad, for example. And it's possible that the last line is bad also. Um, yeah. Okay. Print F. Da, 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 da. Okay. So now we get rid of this bit of code here. And we just do. Now I've always wondered if you can do an include right in the middle of something. I don't know if you really can. Um, but if we can, that'd be really great because then we don't. If we ever need to change this temp, um, we don't have to do anything. I don't know if you can do this with macros, though. Um, let's find out. Well, it looks like we can. Constellation. Yeah, I probably needed a comma there, huh? Yeah, that would have been good. Times 180 pi over c. Yeah, where that set lashes after the first pi over c, I need a comma. And I could, I could just fix it here. I'm going to be a little bit more obnoxious and fix it over here. It is going to be r a, so it's, this is the first element, pi over c, comma, f2, blah, blah, blah. Put it back in the temp add me. Reload temp add me. Don't do this. Don't do that. All right. So apparently the include wasn't the problem, which is nice. Um, oh, we need one more parenthesis there. Um, because 
we need to end off the printf statement. Wow, Perl is even smart enough to recognize that. Okay. Now, anytime you have to make manual changes to a file, it's always a bad idea. So, um, if I were doing this, you know, more often, I would want to automate getting rid of the um, first and last line, probably using something like, okay, why is this say 066? That is not a valid constellation name. Um, oh, and there's another one here. 868. Okay, hang on. Um, oh, wow. Some of these are like HR 1040 and stuff. They're not... They are not... They don't have constellation names. I think we can live with that. We'll just ignore those entries. So now, wow, that actually compiled. OK. This is looking pretty good so far. So I'm going to now sort it, unique it, and then look at the results. The numbers really don't count. The points don't count, as Drew Carey would say. Um, there's a lot of HR objects. I didn't realize we had that many. I mean, that we had this many in this file. So now, after this, we should now start seeing... Um, Aha! Uh -huh. There's a couple that don't look too good. Okay, so what we want to do now... Um, If dollar sign f zero is um, has digits in it, then we don't care. Um, if dollar sign f zero n e dollar sign f one, let's print that whole line. Wow, literally only two cases where that is happening. Um, So are lin Lynx and Orga and Cam Cameldorpus pretty close to each other? I'm guessing they are. Uh, otherwise, we have some real problems. So right here is where this issue is occurring. Um, and so the only question I might have is, I'm going to guess these are very, very close to the boundary, um, if not actually on the boundary. But let's sort of find the two... Um, now this we're not going to actually use from a shell script, but we're going to go ahead and put it in our shell script just so we have it. Because uh, we might need it later on. Okay. Um, so now the question is which ones are these, and we can, we can get to that. And there are not that many uh, stars in, in links, so... Is it L-Y-N? Oh, there are actually more than I thought there were. Okay. Okay. And uh, let's see what this is. Okay. So what we can actually print out is the whole star name in addition to all this. It doesn't hurt us any. Um, and we need to actually not, so we might as well change X and then say, dollar sign FO, X, and let's see what that does. Let's make sure it looks okay. That's totally wrong. Oh, actually, I can't do that, can I? Um, mm, so dollar sign X, we still need to get rid of quite a bit of stuff. Let's see. 
You know what? We could. The first thing we do here is um, just get rid of the quotation marks first. So this would be um, uh, get rid of this. Get rid of the quotation mark. A bunch of dots. Get rid of the second quotation mark. And get turn that on to dollar sign one. And if that's going to be correct, we should see. Um, well, let's see what we see. And then we should have just the. Ooh. Okay. Now I'm saying, okay, if this, this, dot, star, quotation mark, end dollar sign, replace it by dollar sign one. Um, yeah, that's actually what kind of what we wanted. Except now we want to go one step further here and say, oh, and then we'll set this temporary value to x, and then we'll carry on um, and change x so it's just its last three digits, and then we will have this um, this and this. See what that looks like? So it's going to print out 32 Pisces, Pisces on the constellation name. Um, and then we'll find out where the where the uh, the issue is. Okay. And I'm this close to using head and tail to get rid of the two, you know, the top line which we can't use and the bottom line which we can't use. Okay. And now let's see if we can still make. And the problem is I didn't I didn't touch the actual um, constel dot c. So it doesn't recompile, but now it will. Or did it? I'm just going to say it did. I, I'm not. There's something wrong, though. I think there's something wrong. Yep. <sighs> okay, let's do this one more time. Make. There we go. No errors. Pomodoro, back in two and two. And we're back. Excuse me. Okay, now let's see what BC Constell tells us. Good stuff here. And we do need to change the one-liner that we're going to run now for testing, which is this one, which I said we, we weren't going to use, but I lied. Okay, if the full name of the star has a digit in it, no, that's actually okay. One second here. Okay, um, if the second, if the second field has a digit in it, which is F1, and then if the 
the last two fields are not correct, uh, print something. Print the whole line. Okay, so for 16 links, and this we're going to actually write this down because this is these are kind of special cases now. And that should, there we go. And I guess we need to see exactly where these suckers are. So let's take a look here. Uh, uh, 6.95, 45.08, and uh, 6.28, Okay, well, we're going to bring up our friend Stellarium, as we always do. Always find an excuse to run Mr. Stellarium. And always wonder why it doesn't work from uh, one, but it does from the other. Very strange. Okay, and we are trying to find 16 links in one link. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. Delones. That sounds pretty fancy. All right, and we will need to see the constellation boundaries, which I don't think you can get from here. I think you really do have to... Um, nope, didn't want that. I think you really have to go to F4 or something to get those. Um, constellation boundaries. Ooh, what are procession circles? Okay. La 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 la. These are actually probably the wrong things. We need to go to sky over here. Milky Way brightness, stereographic, markings. I don't see anything here that would say, what are called yours? Okay, no? Okay, no. So... Zodiac light, um, dynamic eye adaption, atmosphere, light pollution, shooting stars, labels and markers. That's not helpful. Um, uh, we do not want any surveys. Oh, I guess for here we would decide whether we want to draw the boundary lines or not. Constellations font size. Show constellation lines. Oh, no, that's not what I wanted. I want constellation boundaries, not the same thing. No, don't you? Well, I don't care. Show boundaries. That's. I want to know what your boundaries are, man. Okay. And and I guess we can put labels in there, but I think I, I think I see where we're going with this. Um, so one lynx was being printed out as being in, uh, Auriga, and over here we see that it is, um, it is in lynx, it is not in Auriga, okay. Um, So I guess the question is, in 1875, what was its, and we need to stop freaking time again, what was its RA in declination and why is it being miscategorized? So let's go over here to 18, 18, 1875. Okay. No, I want to go... One day I had, oh, there we are. 
one second into 1875, okay? Steam store, oh, obviously the, the lines haven't, wait, 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 the line should be, there we go, the line should be absolutely straight. Um, converted 648, 30, 45, 15, uh, and then so this line here should, can get a grid going? Yeah, I can. All right. Um, Okay, so for 16 links, well, let's get this a little bit tighter in here. Um, it vaguely bugs me that the constellation line doesn't quite line up um, to the um, to the three minute, which suggests that maybe no, but that wouldn't. It's interesting though that this doesn't quite line up with this. And I'm wondering if I'm looking at the wrong... Uh, well, let's find out. Let's see what happens if we change... how we can make that line come closer, the red line closer to the blue line. Okay, not like that. Okay, so it is actually really... Um, okay, so it, it really is 1875, I mean, it's not, uh, okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and write down these parameters. Um, well, first let's check to make sure we got the J2000 parameters correct, because if we don't have that... Um, if we don't have that, then we there's there's a different reason this isn't working. So according to us, one no, this is sixteen links. Sorry. Has a right ascension of six hours and fifty seven minutes and thirty seven seconds, which I guess that doesn't really look like thirty seven seconds, but oh, actually, hang on. Six hours, fifty-seven minutes, and this is a total pain here. Six hours, forty-nine minutes. Six hours. Is that fifty-two minutes? Hang on. What was our? What is our? Six hours and fifty-seven minutes. So that's forty-nine. I guess we're going a little bit deeper. Okay, so this this here is um, God damn, they make this hard to see. The sons of bitches. Six hours, forty-eight minutes, and zero seconds. We have six hours. Oh, right, right. This is the unprecessed coordinates. Six hours, fifty-seven minutes, and this says six hours, fifty-seven and thirty seconds. A little bit weak. A little bit odd. Um, does the 30 seconds make a difference? It actually might. But okay. And so it looks like the right ascension is going to be the big deal here. So, um, the precessed coordinates, um, are about, so let's just make sure what our precessed coordinates are, because this actually does not look like it's going to uh, bring up anything close to 60 seconds. So basically, all coordinates here are, um, you know, 6 hours and 57 minutes. This says 6 hours, 57 minutes, and 30 seconds. That's a differential of 30 seconds. 1, 2, and are these lines 10 seconds each? 10, 20, oh wow! That would actually do it. That would actually push it over the edge. And then I guess the same question is, do we want to do the same with one links now? Um, and see what's happening there. Again, very, very interesting that we have all coordinates here are 
617.55 and according to this maybe we round it up to the nearest minute or something which would be really bad oh six hours 17 minutes oh wow I rounded down okay so wherever the hell I got these coordinates um I guess it's accurate to the nearest minute but not better but I apparently rounded down minutes as well which is not good um so very not cool and I bet you anything I don't actually have um there's one way to prove this and that is to multiply these numbers by 60 and see if they're all integers or very close to integers uh... it's not looking good they are very close to integers so terrible badness the fact that we're off by a few seconds in these coordinates is enough to affect precession not by a great deal but by enough to break our program so current working directory and um, is down to arc minute only and rounds incorrectly yielding errors in B1875 constellation identification. So I'm unhappy. Let's see if we can find some other uh, nice lists here. Um, is stars.js a list like that? Oh, well, it's the same list actually. And um, it would presumably have the same problems. Brightstars.js. Um, no, these are just named stars, so we don't know what the con well, we don't easily know what the constellations are. Um, BC magnitude, BC lib. Um, Jupiter. Ge those aren't correct, actually. Um, Oh, do I have an eclipse diagram? That's kind of cool. Oh, it's not as cool as I thought it was. Alrighty. Um. So is this any better star name mass pause? Um, okay, no, because once again we have names that don't tell us what constellation something is in. Uh, so not cool. Um, that's not going to work. Um, hang on. Let's find the biggest files in here and see if any of them are useful. Um, houses, house states, ASCII, hi. Aha! This might do it. That's us. Um, right ascension declination. The only thing we may not be getting out of this is, oh yes, we do have constellation. Very, very nice. Awesome. All right, so this this list might actually work. Um, and let's make sure we don't have that same problem of being only down to the minute here. Let's make sure we get these down to the second. That looks good. It looks like the number of seconds is not a... Oh, good. That, even that's not a, a perfect number. Okay, so now we're going to try to extract data from the HYG data catalog. I don't think this will be difficult. And it's going to be Z less, of course. Okay, um, so I think we're good to go. Of course, the sun doesn't count because uh, we, it's right ascension and declination varies, for one thing. Okay, so be gone with your Stellarium. Uh, let's go back to one-liners. Let's go back to commenting. Um, actually, I think we can just put an exit in here. Then we can say Zcat. The cat ate the mouse. No, no. In this case, the cat means a catnate compressed file. 
Perl minus F comma minus A and L E. And now we need to figure out, the, there's only three fields we need, but we need to know what they are. So this is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, I think. We're going to check, of course. So that should be the um, right ascension and declination. And then the constellation is going to be 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. I doubt I got that correct, by the way. But we'll find out. And so now we're going to do a... Shh. Uh, wow, I got that correct. I am impressed with myself. Um, okay, now we just need to um, print out the constellation name. Okay, do we need to print anything else here? Yeah, I guess if we expect errors, which we kind of should, we need to print out um, the ID. That's just the ID that uh, H, you know, that this guy who combines the catalog uses. But we do need that. Okay, so that's what we need. So now we're going to convert this into one of these suckers. Um, something tells me that's. Uh, I just want to see if that works. I mean, it's not going to give us anything useful, but. Just curious to see if that even does anything. Oh, wow. Um, again, the first line we can't use, but that's okay. So, print out the ID, that's fine. And then the... Um, constellation, which is F29 and then the right ascension which is seven and this is eight so let's see what this does um and the sun isn't really okay so the first two lines aren't good now we would expect to see let's make life easier by making the second argument uppercase this looks too much like bare constellations, but I guess we will have to deal with that. Okay. So we will go ahead and uppercase the um, we will go ahead and uppercase the constellation name. Pomodoro, back in two and two. Okay, and we're back. A little winded from walking tells tells you what bad shape I'm in. And I think for this we're gonna say we're just gonna uppercase it so it matches the way our C program is printing. Okay, I think that's what we want. And we will go ahead and cl clean it up a little bit.
I ain't scared of no 10 megabyte file. Um, okay, slight uncoolness happening here in that we don't seem to have constellation names for all of these. Alright, let's take a quick look to make sure that's actually what's going on in real life and it just isn't the program that screwed that up. Um, okay. Alright. Now it does look like there are cases where the, uh, there is no constellation name. So... Oh, these are, I guess, um... Alright, I don't know what the hell they are, but we can adapt. And what we're gonna do here, basically, is say... Oh, we're in one-liners. Um... If F29 is empty, the, in other words, the constellation is empty, we will just continue on. <coughs> Excuse me. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and print it out. So, that should make this file slightly smaller than necessarily a lot smaller. Okay. Excuse me. One moment, please. While I choke to death. Choking complete. Okay. Um... That's a little bit weird here. Oh, this is the first, this is the header line. Okay, that's fine. Um, go, wow, okay, going to the end. Okay, so it does appear we have the ones that do have constellation names in them. We can now go over to um, bcconstell.c. Um, Do that. Do a make. This might take a few seconds. It's, it's like 200,000 lines of code there. And when I said take a few seconds, I mean take a few seconds. Maybe too many seconds. Kind of tempted now to just choose a random subset. But if this compiles, um, well I guess the other problem will be how, how fast does it output stuff. Um, Tempted to do a Jeopardy countdown, which should be 30 seconds. Um, but I can't hum the Jeopardy theme. It's one of my many flaws. Okay, we'll give this about another 10 seconds, and then we're going to give up on it. Four, three, two, one, zero. Okay. Not cool. Um... I mean, in theory, we could read these from a pipe, I mean, from a file, and go through them one at a time, uh, which I'm tempted to do now. Um, okay. So the only one we don't need... Yes, I know it's really big. Okay, the only one we don't need is the very first line. I think every other line we can print. So now... Back over here in the one-liners. I think if we say head minus n minus 1, that should give us all but the first line. Um, yeah, or, 
it should not do anything at all useful. Alright, so let's do this again. That was kind of weird. I don't know how we got from one, to one to there to there. Do I mean head end plus? I probably mean plus one is what I meant to say. Nope. Um, I probably meant to say tail minus n plus one. You know, head, tail, they're all the same. Although I'm surprised we're having such really strange results with the other way. Okay. And, oh, I know it's wrong. Yeah, I probably meant to do that. Uh, nope, that's not what I meant to do. Um, maybe I didn't need to do head minus n plus 1. I think that was going to be the top line, though. Yep. Um, I can do this for hours. Um, alright. Follow... Minus n plus 1 is what I want. And I think the only reason that failed before is I actually meant to say plus 2, but let's find out. Let's try it with plus 2. Beautiful. And the reason I want to do this is because I can now do this. Um... I can now just include a random 1,000 lines uh, into the program. Oh, and there's no need to do that because it just, it just writes the stuff now. Then I can do a touch bc constel.c make bc constel and get 500 results uh, at a time. Or uh, whatever I did, I think a thousand. Thousand. Okay. Still not crazy about the make speed here. A thousand lines is not a lot. Kind of, kind of sucking this up a little bit here. I could reduce this, but I mean, a thousand lines. You should not have a lot of trouble with that. I'll give it five seconds and then we'll check to see if I maybe screwed something up. Three seconds. Done. Maybe, oh, okay. Didn't mean to do that. I think maybe I put it in the wrong... Um, yep, there it is. I meant to do that because we are in um, born shell, not seashell. So this is actually a little bit different. thousand lines. All right, all right, all right, all right. Um, one second. Okay. Um, so I think we want to keep the output of, so what we want to do here is do that, touch bc constel.c, make, no need to pipe it to less, bc constel to temp um, time stamp, oh, that's a, that's, that's actually not going to work. That's a t-shell ad, um, alias. Um, 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 I don't know if this This is borderline not going to work. But let's see what happens.
Oh, I guess it did work. Okay. And then what we want to do is we want to check to see um, whether the second and third fields are identical. All right. And I guess in theory, we don't really need to save it because if we do get a miss, nah, we will save it. And I can't do this because now I don't know what temp file I just created. Pipe two pro minus a n l e. If dollar sign f one not equal to dollar sign f two, print the line. So if this works, we expect a lot of nothing. It's only if it doesn't work that we expect some output. Um. And that's probably ugly enough that I want to add a little bit of a uh, buffer to it. Start, echo, end. So that way we'll know that it's a really a case of nothing being printed. Nice. Ooh. Controversy. Um, later okay because um, RE NAM star whatever um, only gives minute precision. Precession, no, it's precision. Okay. But this one, 72017, uh, the Virgo Libra, that could be very interesting. And I probably should have done beginning of line 72017. Okay. <coughs> K51, oh, that's the, that's the class type. Um, so that's the whole record that it has in HYG. I think the second number is hopefully the hip number because otherwise I have no way of getting to this. It is. Okay. Um, hip 7. It's hip to be hip. Da, 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 da. And okay, let's take a look at uh, what our good friend Mr. Stellarium has to say. Um. Every time. So it's getting better. We're, we're finding fewer errors. Um, I think. I think it's getting better. Um, so we're looking for 72243. And at some point I really need to start saving my freaking options. Um, I'll do that this time. Uh, so we want this mount. We do want an equatorial grid. And then we want an F4. We want in the star door. We do want boundaries. We want boundaries, man. And then I should be able to save nothing. I think the save is actually F2. I don't know if that actually helped anything. <whistles> we are talking about pretty damn close to the border here. Of, oh, that's what I want. I want constellation labels, right? That's Libra and Virgo. And that is indeed where the Sorry, the issue is in Emacs now, so the issue is Libra Virgo. So this is uh, pretty damn tight here. 
When I say damn tight, I mean barely according to Stellarium on the Libra side. And so the problem is, according to us, oh, according to these guys, it's in Virgo. Interesting. And let's see why that is. <coughs> so if this is your um, it's 14 hours, I think we can agree on that. Times 60, 46 minutes. Okay, we can agree on that too. Something tells me the last is what's going to be the, the bad one. And the number of seconds is 27.0552, and you say it is 27.04. That's not a huge difference. Um... And yet, HYG puts that into, um, that can't be right though, because if it's greater, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, okay. So yeah, these guys put it into Virgo, and, and this is, we're putting it into... Libra, but just freaking barely. Um, right ascension on date is 14, 46, 27. 14, 46, it's the same. Um, hmm. Um, and according to them, the, the constellation lines over here, but even if we're at 30, um, this would still be on the Libra side. So I think I'm going to go with what I have and maybe bug the HYG guy. Um, let's make sure that he's actually claiming that he's using uh, J2000 positions. Because if he's not, we can't screw him over for anything. Um... All right, there is a, uh, it is Pomodoro time, we'll be back in a minute, and we're going to screw this guy, because I am not, okay, I'll be back, yeah, one second, let's make sure we can screw him, all right, back in two and two. Okay, and I'm back. Aha! Okay, so there should be J2000.
Let's see where they get the constellation from. Hmm. Okay, so the one we have found so far, it looks like um, my program and Stellarium are more accurate. So this says, it should say actually we're, yep, lib, Libra. Not as HYG says, Virgo. So let's just see if we can find some other ones. Um, and let's we be braver than 1,000. I think we can go for 5,000 at a time now. I say that as though I know how long 5,000 is going to take. That wasn't too bad. Ooh. Not cool. We have found another one. And let's go ahead and get the full data on this sucker. And that was 92907. Okay. You claim this is in Scutum, Mr. HYG. HYG is not is a combination of three catalogs. Um and so you claim this is in Scutum, your 93200 is the HIP number. And do we have another case where it's really close to a... I think I might have gotten that one wrong. Because 92300, 93200, yeah, not even close. Man! You know how to pick them, man. Um, IAU constellation is Sagittarius. You say Sagitta. I hope you say that because we want to be the right ones here. Uh, yep, you say Scutum. I say Sagittarius. Let's call the whole thing off. Nice. Okay. Um... So our duty here would be to contact this guy and tell him he's a butthole. Um, or to, you know, to go ahead and um, run this program. It'll take a while, but run this program for all of his stars and correct the, uh, the constellation name as necessary. So, again, very, very close to the border. Um, so let's get, see if we can get one more before we decide this is too much fun. Now if I'm smart, I'm going to actually go ahead and you know, draw it out, put it back in. Um, ooh, la, ooh la la, another one. You have made many mistakes, sir, and they are unforgivable. Um, So you claim this is in Orion, I claim it's in Monoceros. Uh, this may be the one that H.A. Ray actually uh, had a special comment on. So this is HIP 28063. Once again, Monoceros. But you, my friend, say that it is in Orion. Actually, no, I'm sorry. Uh, the H area problem was the opposite one. Okay. So we have debunked Mr. HYG data. Um, the only possible issue is that he's updated his stuff since then and he has fixed these errors. So we do sadly need to go over here and um, go to the latest version. And let's see when we last updated this. Ooh. So he may have actually... Um, no directories? Wow. Um, uh,
Okay. I think this is the version we already have, though. Yeah, it's five years old, so this is not... We have the latest, latest um, versions here. Okay! So he is fucked up. Screwed the pooch. Um... Well, let's go ahead and pull this because if we want to change it, we do need to, we do need to push it. So, um, well, I mean that should be just a copy of this, right? Um, Okay, so he has he has precessed these, uh, presumably to two thousand, but he's done it wrong. <coughs> ooh 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 ooh. The spectral types. Um. Okay. So, let's go ahead and pull this. Sorry, we, we, we actually need to pull this. Um, and fuck with him a little bit later on. Not necessarily on stream. Did, do I mean clone? I probably do mean clone. It's not that big. That's what she said. <laughs> that wasn't very funny. Um, okay. So now what we're going to have here is the... Oh, okay, if we go into the right thing... Now, let's just make sure that the ones that he has wrong, he still has wrong here. So that would be 72017, where he claims it's in Virgo, and reality claims it's in Libra, uh, 92907, where he claims it is in Scutum, and we already found it was in Sagittarius. And finally, 27992, which he claims is in Orion, but is actually in Monoceros. At least according to us and Stellarium. Um, the only thing I can think of is he copied the constellation names from Gleese, but that still wouldn't be correct. Um, it's a damn good question. Um, that would be funny as if what we did here is we did this and we kind of precessed backwards to 1875. Um, where the constellation lines don't change, the positions do, but the constellation lines, um, presumably the, they'll, they'll straighten up a little bit because we're getting to 1875, but aside from that they won't change. Mm. Okay, so whatever, but it looks like that is correct. Um, let's see. So, write letter to HYG dude. I don't think that's his actual name. Um, about below. And then obviously I'll say these are just three that I checked. Um, need to check all. I'm fairly confident now that this is the function that I I wanted to write this that it's correct. Um, however, there's a small problem that I literally just created, aside from the fact that I need to move all these to libraries. Um, I decided to output the constellation name, which is great, but at some point I would actually like to use um, one of the functions, the one of the GF, uh, you know, geometry finder functions of CSpice, and I'm pretty sure it doesn't work with strings; it only works with numbers. Um, 
so I'm going to try to find the uh, GF function that we could use next time, and then we can try to find out when the sun or the moon or some other planet is in each constellation. And what's interesting here, in, in the very vague sense of the word interesting, um, is that um, da -da -da -da, the moon can be outside of the 12 or 13 zodiacal constellations. Um, so let's let's see what that is. Let's see what that does. So really briefly here, um, before I take off in a few minutes, let's see if we can find if there's a geometry um, user-defined geometry. Okay, that's a geometry finder dummy function. Signal interrupt indicator. Cleared the uh, distance search. Geometric event finder. Is target in field of view? Hang on, that could be actually useful for the. Um, Oh man, that could be useful for eclipses, I think. Um, mother of God. So what, what we, can we put in there? Minimum complement of FOV cone angle, convergence tolerance, maximum number of FOV boundary vertices, type of instrument. Um, n name, the name of the instrument is, why do we need that? Um, name of the observing body. Um, oh, okay, so this is not that easy. It must have a corresponding NAFE ID. We cannot create our own uh, pretend spaceships that live at the cone of a, um, that live at the tip of the cone of an umbral cone. Uh, occultation, somewhere here it's going to say something like um, user Um, user-defined Boolean, user-defined scalar. And I think that might be the only user-defined functions we can give it. User-defined scalar quantity. Um, And what we're looking for is every change in constellation, uh, which might not be the easiest thing in the world to um, to return or to have, you mean compute actually. Um, there might be ways around this. We could actually have, for example, the. Um, constellation determined at a given time and then like 10 seconds later or something or one second later if we wanted to and uh, return one in the cases that that's uh, the constellations are different and zero if they're the same uh, I don't know if that'll work <sighs> although that could be a boolean you know false true true meaning that it switches at that time false meaning that it doesn't um, so actually that might be the way to go let's let's take a quick look here User-defined Boolean. Um, um, oh, wait a minute. The compute the scalar quantity of interest corresponding to an ET. I don't know how that's useful. That could be bad. Um, UD fun B need not call UD funds. Okay, uh, and the user design. So we could just have a very basic um, binary fun a boolean function that if a if a time is um, if the constellation is different let's say 10 seconds after and 10 seconds before um, the given time, that's a true value. The only problem is we might miss a lot of cases. Uh, so we need to be a little bit careful there. Um, and there might be ways around that. There might be ways around that. 
Yeah. Anyway, <coughs> I don't think there's any other user defined. Let's see, user defined. I think those are the only two places that user defined is going to appear at all. Yep. So I think we can do this. I think we can say user defined boolean. Um, when it is um, yeah the points where it's true will be the points where the constellation changes value again the big problem here is we might just skip over a constellation change if we're you know using interval of like 60 seconds it we could just skip the whole thing so we're going to be careful here I think we might be able to do something with scalar and scalar could be the smallest amount of time that it changes values until we get down to like zero or to like you know one second and that might be quicker than um than using a boolean value so the scalar would like start off at one second multiply by two each time until we found a, a change in constellation um and then return that value saying you have to go this many minutes to find a change in constellation um still kind of ugly though um anyway uh, let's see okay and that might be really inefficient too okay but that's pretty much um what we're gonna have to do one of these if we want to find out when something changes constellations, obviously we will have to check our work against probably Stellarium. And we have been going now for a good 1 hour 54 minutes. Not too bad. Thank you for watching the stream. And I will probably not be back today, but I will hope not, you know, today GMT. But today in Albuquerque, it's January 24th at about 8.40 p.m. Probably won't be back tonight. Hope to be back tomorrow. Talk to you later. Thank you for watching.